Hello, and in today's video we have a second look at the D Sanction. Now this is a great little game, however I'm not 100% happy with the rule book, and I think you probably picked that up on the first look video where I sort of had a quick skim and tried to give you a bit of an overview. Now, first of all, let me just say up front that I love the setting and I think the game engine works really well and I love the design aesthetic that they've gone for, particularly with this um, sort of limited edition hardback with the gold leaf. Now, one of the problems I think I've got with it is the fact that there's all this bold text everywhere and I think that actually gets in the way of understanding the game. It actually um, sort of blocks your ability to absorb things. Uh, I also think this dice step uh, character creation is unnecessarily fussy. Uh, I'm not particularly keen on the use of playing cards. Uh, I wish he'd just stuck with dice. So these are sort of nitpicky uh, objections at the end of the day. Um, we've got this lovely little bookmark here, which I'll just get out of the way for now. As you can see here, I think this is particularly um, a good example of how I think the bold text gets in your way. Because for me, the bold text draws your eye to it. And often you'll miss bits before or after it. And I was finding myself getting a bit frustrated trying to read through what is actually a fairly simple game. So much so that I had a mad moment and decided to make my own copy. So because I got the PDF, uh, I actually have uh, basically sourced a load of the assets and recreated the rule book um, in my own edition. Now what I've done is, I, as you can see, I've stripped out all of the bold text where possible. Obviously some bold text does need to stay in place. I've reordered sections of the rule book as well to make it uh, read easier. I've also changed the dice allocation because uh, looking at the dice allocation, you're effectively able to do all d4s, all d6s, 1d8 with a d4 or 1d10 with two d4s. So I basically just put that here. I said all resources are starting as d6. However, you can increase one to a d8 by lowering one to a d4, or if you prefer, increase one to a d10 and reduce the other two to d4. Much simpler um, and hopefully still maintains the intent. As you can see, I've also moved the tables into character creation, which probably doesn't look as pretty and uh, had a bit of a debate on Twitter with Paul over this, uh, but I think helps you get into the game and understand the flow. So that's the main changes I've made. As you can see, I've also taken artwork out of the original PDF. Um, I've updated the unraveling with some little graphics, which uh, are actually color, but I printed this in black and white. Um, as you can see, it is pretty much the same as the original rule book. I've actually expanded the Tudor timeline to be from the end of the War of the Roses till uh, Charles I, but mostly concentrating on Henry VIII to Elizabeth. Um, partly because uh, obviously I like that um, as a student of history. Um, and you can see, very, very similar. I've also reordered the best three to be in alphabetical order. And I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I have repeated in the appendices all the tables. Um, I have also added all the consequences that I could find as a page. Um, what else have I done? Uh, yeah, I've stripped out all references to playing cards. And then the only other thing I've done is I've added the word focus to the character sheet because that's where you put it. And I found that a little bit confusing in the rule book as to, you know, what was this thing here? And I realized it was a focus. Now, does that mean that this rule book as is, is useless? No, certainly is not. Now, if um, you're happy to read this book from cover to cover, think about the rules, play the rules, I think you'll find it's a very simple game and you don't need to go crazy like I did. But because I love it so much, that's why I was prepared to put the effort into. So I've sourced uh, this original picture of what, uh, D with Queen Elizabeth. I located uh, this uh, symbol on the D Sanctuary website. And so I've recreated it. I've even inserted some actual portraiture of John D and Washington. 
and I am a lot happier with this. It makes the rule book for me easier to understand. I feel more confident about running the game with my players. Now, how does the game actually work? Well, basically, it's very simple. Um, you roll your dice, and that's either a d4, d6, d8, d10, or if you're really lucky, a d12. And it can either be stepped up or stepped down due to various circumstances. So a d6 goes to a d4 if it's stepped down, or to a d8 if it steps up. You're trying to roll anything except a one or a two. If you roll a one or a two, uh, you have failed, or as the game calls it, you have faltered, and therefore you might suffer a consequence. Now, the consequences, obviously, are very loosely goosey defined, and uh, they can be things like you're bleeding, you've got a headache, um, you're mired, and as I say, I've created a little page here of various definitions there, uh, that uh, you can find scattered throughout the rule book and hope to have managed to capture them all here. However, if you're in combat, then if you falter in your attack, you might get struck back. So, for example, let's find... Here you go, I've added a section called humans. Um, humans have the standard attack chart. So, basically, if you falter, they will hit you, and they roll a d8, and on a 1 or 2, they back off. On a three or four, they graze you, and you end up with the status of bleeding. On a five or six, you get a hit. On a seven or eight, you get a hit, but you might also get a special. So if they're assassins, they do their special attack against you. However, you can customize this one to eight chart based on various monsters. So, for example, an oaken will do a root grasp, a thrash, a rake, or a thorn grip. So that gives you a nice little bit of subtle... Uh, tweak into the sort of damage chart. Now the one thing that I'm a little bit confused by, and I know Paul's very good at watching these videos and engaging with uh, his fans and his critics, so hopefully he will help clarify. Now some monsters have an attack. So normally as I understand it, if you fail to hit someone they effectively attack you back. However the GM can choose to have a monster attack you and if they do that, my understanding is you roll a plus two on that d8 table. Now, my only concern with this is, if you've got a monster with three attacks, let's say, and you've got three players, in theory, that monster could actually get six attacks a turn, because it would have three attacks for its attack, and then one automatic attack per player who misses it. Now, you'd have to be very unlucky for all three players to miss, but in theory... As I understand it, that could be six attacks by a monster. Now, I'm tempted to house rule that if that is the intent of the rules to be it gets up to three attacks. So, for example, if you've got two players and they attack it and it gets to attack back, well, that's two of its three attacks, so it gets one bonus attack. That's something I need to think about and decide on. But that's really the only thing I would criticise. Um, so for me, as I say, this rule book is perfectly fine and obviously in its uh, paperback format is pretty much identical to this. However, I much prefer my cleaned up edition, um, which, as I say, removes the cards because I don't really see they're necessary and helps clarify, based on my understanding of the rules, how things work. And I'm hopefully... Uh, getting that right. Now, in particular, the nature of the enemy, I, I've cleaned that up as well, um, because this bit in the brackets is known as your resistance, but it actually consists of your potency, your armor, and your tradecraft. So I've made that a bit more implicit in my version of the rules. So that's all I've really done with this um, this copy here, is basically take what's already there and just tweaked it. So when I'm at the table, uh, I don't have to think or be confused by um, the, the bold text that's all over the original um, edition. Now, as I say, if you're not bothered by that, then obviously I'm bleating on about something that's not very relevant. I am aware of at least one other person who wasn't 100% happy with um, some of the font choices, and in particular, I guess, because of this bold text. Now, the one thing I have arrays from the rule book is this really really nice page here and i am going to have to think about how to reinsert this because this is really good because it says oh this bit here is on page 12 or oh, this bit here is on page 14 so i really do like that uh, element and as i say really once you know how to play the game all you need is this character sheet is what's your ability um, sorry what's your resources what's your abilities 
What's your fortune? What's your focus? What mundane possessions do you have? Do you have any armor? What's your trade craft? Have you got any injuries or afflictions? And how many hits have you got? Who's your contact? And any favors? Um, and also your unraveling die. And really, as I say, because this rule set is actually pretty simple once you, you get your head around it, uh, this character sheet's all you're going to need to play. And it all becomes really, really easy. Now, in play, the one thing I could see being coming upon is keeping track of all the afflictions, because, you know, who's bleeding, who's on burning, who's poisoned, who's mired, who's bedazzled, who's um, got a headache, who, who's got a wonky arm, all that sort of stuff. Um, that could have an impact on these dice here. So, for example, if you've got a broken arm, you might say, well, all your physical abilities are stepped down. So, but that's not going to affect your intellectual or your supernatural, for example. Um, so that's pretty much it. So overall, um, having had a really good look at these rules because of uh, re-editing them, um, I would say they are 98% there. Uh, for me, though, if you ever do a second printing pool, please cut down on the bold text. It, it's really, really intrusive, and I'm not a fan. Also, I know you like the cards, but I don't really see them adding anything, so I would remove them. And then, for, for example, the layout here, I find excessively confusing in a similar way. Um, I find this unnecessarily complex. But... I mean, I'm really having to nitpick and be pedantic, to be honest. Um, so I definitely approve of this set of rules. Really excited to get it to the table. Love the setting. And um, the rules are nice and basic, nice and streamlined. And when you're actually playing them, all the little niggly sort of, oh, I'm not happy with this, I'm not happy with that. Well, all, all that stuff's going to go away. Now, admittedly, in the original rule book, uh, there's a bit less on the Tudor history and the timeline, rather than three pages of dates with, uh, you know, adventure seed ideas. It's just one column, and um, that, that's probably actually a better idea because, at the end of the day, this is not a historical game. It's a investigation game set in a historical setting. So yeah, there you go. Um, so hopefully um, you will get to play this game and maybe you will consider buying the PDF. Obviously, because this is my copy, it's not going to be made available to anyone. Uh, if you want to get hold of this, um, buy the original PDF and make your own, uh, like I did. Uh, but yeah, it's a great game and... I just wanted to make sure that uh, I returned to it and, and made everyone aware that I think it's a really good product and you should definitely go out and get it. Just be aware that at first glance, it's just flicking through the pages. Uh, I don't think it's going to click with you, but actually it's really, really simple. And in play, I think you're going to have all sorts of fun with your Enochian intelligence. And if you're not aware, Enochian is like Dee's uh, angelic language idea, I believe. And... Um, yeah, there's all sorts of fantastic political and horror and investigation and intrigue uh, in this setting. And these rules uh, do a pretty good job at letting you access that in a fun and hopefully engaging way. Anyway, I think that will do for my look at the D section. Um, if I return to it, it will be based on the five adventures that Paul's currently working on. And he's also got a rather spiffing map he's working on of uh, London, which I got a feeling I didn't order, but um, that might be something to pick up um, in the future. And uh, I'm going to see what my playgroup make of this game. And hopefully uh, we get lots of play out of it because uh, I'm loving it. Anyway, I think that's enough waffling for this video. So until the next one, happy gaming.